Hello, Video Game Hunter here, and welcome to my pickup video. But wait, did I just get back from a convention? Nope. Well, not yet, in a way. I don't go to another convention until March, which is the Louisville Arcade Expo, which I go to every year. No, um,. What I decided to do this year is try my best to upload as much content to my YouTube channel this year. So I think one of the best ways to do this is by uploading a pickup video every two months. But I will keep my pickup videos from the conventions separate from these types of videos. So that said, let me show you guys what I picked up for November and December of 2017. And I think I'll start off with the Christmas gifts I got, obviously for Christmas. Um, let's start off with what my little brother got me, a Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Now I did cover a controversy video on my last video I did, which actually did okay in my opinion. I might continue making opinion piece videos, not, not too often, but once in a while. And, um, I have yet to play this game because, um, right now my roommate is playing this game in his own Nintendo Switch. So, once he gets done with this game, I will finally get to be able to play it and see that big titty bunny rabbit that everyone's been complaining about. Well, not everyone, just the usual SJW types of people. And now, let me show you guys what my mom got me. Now, as usual, my mom always tells me, well, give me three little things that you want for Christmas. And as usual, I tell her what little things I want. But those little things always turns out to be like big things to her. Because she always gets me more than what I ask for. And I, and I asked her, I want the Devil's Part-Timer, the manga, from Volume 1 and up. And as usual, she gives me four of these things. Um... Four volumes, volume one, which by the way, it's called The Devil Is A Part-Timer. I actually have uh, the anime on Blu-ray, which is just called The Devil's Part-Timer. I wonder what's the reason behind that. Why did they change the name? But whatever, so here's volume one, volume two, volume three, and volume four. Now, to give you a quick um, explanation of what this story is about, well, it's basically the devil who, ex who basically escapes his demon world, and he ends up coming to our world, and for him to survive, he has to become a part-timer at McDonald's, basically, which I believe they call it Rick Donald's due to copyright reasons. Oh yeah, and one of the enemies in the story is actually Taco Bell, which of course is not called Taco Bell, it's called something else. But still, that's quite amusing. Um, yeah, so if you ever get the chance, check out the manga or the anime. Now, what my mom also got me is some comic books. No, it's not those superhero comic books. I don't really care for those things, but I do care for My Little Pony comics and comic books based on video games. But I didn't get any video game comics this year. This year I asked her to give me some My Little Pony comics. And she did. Especially the ones I don't have. She got me My Little Pony comic issue 50, 51, 52, 53, and 54. Now, I am a bit behind. I think the last issue I read was the um, election of the mayor in Ponyville. Um, that was the last um, two I read, so I think I'm still a couple behind. But once I read those, I can finally read these, which even though when I do read these, I am still going to be behind for, from the current issue. Now, uh, my brother, my oldest one, also got me a gift, but I don't know what I did with that t-shirt he got me. It was a um, DuckTales t-shirt. Now, I'm not a big fan of DuckTales, but whatever. Um, it's the thought that counts, but I should rewatch that show at some point. So that said, um, now my mom's 
I was about to say stepdad. My mom's um, um, boyfriend got me a gift card for um, GameStop. Now, here's the thing with me and GameStop. I don't really buy games from GameStop anymore. Because mostly they became a toys and figurine type of store that also sell t-shirts. I mean, they still sell games, but I don't really buy games from there anymore. I buy most of my games, like the newer ones, from Amazon since... I have Amazon Prime, and I'm, most of the time I get discounts for those games. So, uh, what I did with the gift card was I bought some figurines. And I also bought a Nintendo Switch, um, Switch case. Which I would say, all they had was, of course, Nintendo related cases. I was kind of hoping to find something that's not Zelda or Mario related. I mean, I'm somewhat of a Zelda guy, but I'm definitely not a Mario guy. But I was kind of hoping to find something that's not Nintendo related. I was kind of hoping to find, like, a Bayonetta Nintendo Switch case. But, of course, they don't have one. But, but if they ever do, I'm totally replacing this with Bayonetta. Because she's a sexy character, and I have yet to play her games. But that one toy figuring I mentioned was this one right here. Twilight vs. Tempest from the My Little Pony movie. If you haven't seen that movie, and if you're a brony, I highly recommend that movie. That movie is actually pretty darn good. But if you're not a brony, if you're... A parent, please take your kids to see this movie. It's it's a pretty good movie. I I, I do re recommend it. So the other times I've been at GameStop, again, I picked up another figurine, which I got this little diva right here. I'm not really into those what do you call those things, pop figurines, those things that have like that gives characters a really big head. Yeah, I don't really collect those things, but I was looking for a diva one. Cause her mech suit looks awesome, and she's my favorite character to play as in, in Overwatch. Um, I'm okay with the other characters, but D.Va was my first character I played as, and I'm still badass with her. And she even has her own little space that can take her out. They made her very, very small. Which is quite understandable since this mech is kind of big. So I can see why they made her small. And I can now plop her right back in. It's actually easy peasy. Now in early December, me and my roommate did actually go to the mall to look around. And um... First, we actually stopped by Hot Topic, and I didn't get any, well, technically I did, but let me explain first. Um, my roommate got a couple of things. I think he got like a jacket and a t-shirt, and the employee told him it was buy two things and buy one thing for free. And I grabbed the t-shirt that I've been meaning to buy and tossed it to him. And so, I got myself a free Tempest t-shirt. Again, She's a villain from the My Little Pony movie, which, again, I highly recommend. So thank you, my roommate, for getting me this free t-shirt. I know I tossed it to you when they told you you can get a free item, but this was a, this was a really awesome t-shirt, and thank you for getting it for me. Now, after we left Hot Topic, we stopped by at FYE. Now, usually... I don't really buy anything from FYE anymore because a lot of the stuff I think they're kind of overpriced and I can get them cheaper elsewhere. But I know I, the item I found I will never find anywhere else unless maybe eBay. But I'm not going to do that. This one's like I saw this and it's a must have right away. And that is this cereal box. Pumpkin's Pete's Marshmallow Crunch. Mmm, yummy. Um, for those who don't recognize this cereal box, I don't blame you. Um, I never thought this would ever become a physical form. Um, this cereal box was actually referenced in that show I really loved watching, Ruby. And um, I don't recall this character on top of my head, but she was on this cereal box in the show. And the fact they actually made this cereal box a physical form, I bought it right away. Which, 
cost me twelve dollars. Very overpriced. Usually a cereal box costs what three or less dollars, but twelve dollars for a cereal I did never ever thought it would ever become a physical form. This was a must have. I am going to show you guys some stuff that I bought from lightstuff.com. For those who don't know what lightstuff.com is, it's basically a website where you can shop for anime merchandise. And boy did I bought some anime merchandise. And no, they're not for children to play. Let me play, they're all visual novel games for the PC. And the main reason I went to this website because I found out Honey Pop had a physical copy. Now you can actually buy this game from Steam, but the problem is the Steam version, it's digital and it's censored unless you get the uncensored patch, which I do. <laughs> but when I found out this was a physical um, copy of this, I bought this like literally right away. This only cost me about 15 bucks, which is, might be actually cheaper to get than getting digital on Steam, unless they have some kind of special discount sale. Now, the other games I got from RightStuff.com was Hot Work, which I which I did not know was from the same people who did the Bible Black visual novel. Which I'm sadly to say, this visual novel is not as good as Bible Black. This one is a very short is a very short visual novel and you can literally get it done like in maybe an hour or so depending how fast you can read. Now it says there's like 19 different endings to this game, but they're not that great endings unlike the Bible Black visual novel. So I can't really recommend this one, but if you ever come across the Bible Black one, I highly recommend getting that over this. Um, and the other games I got was, um, I believe it pronounced Omoros Professor Cherry. Now, when I was going through the list of hentai visual novel games they had on the website, this one caught my eye for some odd reason. She really looked familiar. So after I bought this and got this in the mail, I popped this in and found out I bootlegged this game a long time ago. I mean, I never finished it, but I bootlegged something a long time ago. I totally forgot that I did. I don't usually bootleg things, but since now I own a physical copy of this game, I think I am forgiven. So please, um, the creators of this game, Please don't sue me. Please don't charge me a quarter of a million dollars. I have a physical copy now. The money went to your company, so yay. <laughs> oh, I probably should explain what this um, visual novel game is about. Um, basically, you play as this high school student. Of course, you're a high school student. And you pretty much have a big old crush on the professor of your class and I mean who wouldn't but in my humble opinion this is an okay visual novel game I haven't beaten it yet I'm I'm still playing it but this professor she is treated a very innocent character yes yeah, she does stuff to you does stuff to you but whatever it's pretty much what you expect from hentai so yeah oh yeah one last thing, then I move on. This also comes to extra games. I'm gonna nurse you one and two. Uh, I haven't touched th um, these two yet. I probably will eventually, but I thought th that was a pretty good bonus to add to this collection. All right, next one, I'll show you that, that one last. I also got Pazooka Cafe. I haven't touched this, I want to finish um, the Professor Cherry game first, but um, this one might be the oldest visual novel I own because according to this, this will also work on Windows 98. And when I installed this game, yes, it did look like it belonged on Windows 98. So if you still have a Windows 98 computer, um, you should be able to play this just fine. 
Um, now this last one I'm going to show you. It doesn't really look like a hentai visual novel game, but it was on RightStuff.com 18 and up list. And it was, this was also on their um, um, Naughty List sale for December, which is funny. It's called the Naughty List sale, which means I got a discount on this game. But I haven't played it yet, but I did watch that little video clip that was on the DVD disc. Um, I'll show you right now. Um, I forgot what was on there, but I'm pretty sure it's safe enough for me to show you guys. Nothing sexual related. But according to the website, there are some sexual stuff in this game. If not, that's okay. I'm always looking for some good visual novel games. Now this game, um, I didn't get it from lightstuff.com. I actually got it from eBay for a decent price. It was a lot cheaper than what everyone else was offering. So, and what I picked up was Sony Kami, the communication with Sonico. Now, um, I have played very little of this game, and so far, it's alright. It's basically like a visual novel game, but there is some first person elements. When I mean first person elements, I mean it's, it's a first person shooting game. But instead of using guns to shoot, you are actually taking pictures of this character with her consent. That's very important to remember. Do not take pictures of someone unless you have their consent. Which, by the way, she is a model. I don't know if I said that or not already, but I like, I like the character. And plus, they also got a very good voice actor for her. But what also sucks, there's only one voice actor throughout this whole game, so far as far I'm aware, and it's this character. Now, you can change it from Japanese to English, but I prefer English dub. I know it does not make me a true anime fan, but I'm sorry, I prefer everything in English. I don't want to watch something in Japanese unless I have to. Okay, um, next I'm going to show you guys a movie that I bought from Amazon. Now, it's not like a movie, like an action flick or whatnot, it's a concert film. Which is Slipknot Day of Gusano. I, I apologize for everyone in Mexico. I, not one percent sure that's how you pronounce it, but it's live in Mexico. Now the thing is, it's okay. It's a concert footage where Slipknot perform. But what sucks is there is no special features in here. Which sucks because I thought there was going to be because all the other Slipknot DVDs or Blu-rays I ever picked up had some special features like interviews and random footage. Nope. If you want something like that, you have to get the DVD Special Edition, which also has a documentary on there. So at some point, I might get rid of this Blu-ray copy and get the Special Edition on DVD. I really, and everyone else, should listen to this guy who reviewed this Blu-ray on Amazon. He actually got his copy way early than anyone else. And we did not believe that when he said this is not worth the purchase because it has no special features or anything like that. He was 100% correct. Seriously, Slipknot, get your shit together. I'm a huge fan of you guys. But come on, there should be no excuse for that. So next, I'm going to show you guys some PS4 games I picked up. Now, the first one I'm going to show you, I actually picked up from Limited Run Games. Now, the whole reason I got this game, 2064 Read Only Memories, is because one of the characters looks like an anthropomorphic creature. Now, I'm not 100% sure, I mean, he could be just an elf or something, but I'm always on a look for a furry game for me to stream on Friday. Because every Friday on my YouTube channel in Twitch, I do a furry Friday stream where I play some cute and cuddly creatures or anthropomorphic creatures type of games. So... If he's not a furry creature, then oh well, I'm still going to play this. It looks kind of neat. I haven't played it yet. 
Now, speaking of another game I haven't played yet, I also picked up Nier Automata. Now, I haven't touched the game yet, but I heard a lot of good things from this game. A lot of people saying it was good on Twitter, and one of the people who I subscribe to, um, Metal Jesus Rocks, he also recommended this game, so I pretty much said, why not? So I went on Amazon and bought this, and I think it was around 30 or so bucks. I think it's worth the purchase, especially since everyone say it's a really good game. Now here's another game that I bought that I did stream on Furry Friday, but it's not all that good in my humble opinion. It's okay, it's better than the others in its franchise, but I think it could have done so much more. And that is Sonic Force. I literally beat this game in one sitting in my Furry Friday stream. I was not expecting to beat this game in one sitting. I, I just did. And it's it only took me about four and a half hours. That's not really worth my purchase of something that I believe I spent like 40 or 50 dollars. So if you plan on getting in this game, I highly recommend it until the price drops to around I guess around twenty dollars. I mean, the game is okay. It's not as bad as like Sonic 06 or what's the other one called? The other Sonic game on the Wii U. Ignore those two. Don't play them. But if you see this game for twenty bucks, I say pick it up if you want. I wish they did a little bit more with create your own character because it. He kind of, he or she kind of looks kind of off compared to the actual characters of the Sonic series. So that said, um, yeah, um, go and pick this up if you see this for about for twenty dollars. Now I did manage to pick up one video game system in this pickup video, and that is a Japanese PlayStation Two. Now, why did I pick up a Japanese PlayStation 2? Well, it's because I have quite a few um, Japanese PS1 games. And, um, and what sucks is that um, the PS2 and the PS1s, they are all region lock, so I have no way to play them unless I get a Japanese system. But there are other ways around this by modding the system with a um, region free chip. But I am no modder, and I don't know anyone who knows how to mod a PS2, so I had no choice but to import a system. Now, this is great because I can finally play that um, Pepsi Man game that I always wanted to play. Um, which is weird, because not because it's just the game, but the game is basically an American game. Everything is pretty much in English. The only thing that makes it Japanese is the fact the Pepsi Man is a Japanese Pepsi logo mascot, and there's very little Japanese text, and I think you only see those things in the cutscenes when you see this American guy speaking. So, yeah, I am very glad that I own a Japanese PlayStation 2 game. So let's put you to the side. Now, so the next batch of games I'm going to show you guys, I bought from a game store that says recently opened up here, and that is Game Exchange. Yes, I know Game Exchange is a popular chain store on the east side of the United States, but I never saw one here in Kentucky, and I think it's great they opened one up close by to me. Now, here are some of the games I picked up from the past two months that's been here. I picked up, um... 1080 snowboarding for the N64. Now, I haven't had the chance to play this, but I'm in the mood to play snowboarding games again, and I believe I've been told this is a good game on the N64. Let's just hope so, because I, the games I've played so far on the N64, I don't really care for, and that's including Mario 64 and Conker's Bad Fur Day. Sorry, I don't really care for those games all that much. So the next game I'm going to show you guys is Carrier for the Dreamcast. Now, the thing about this game, it screams 
we ripped this game off from Resident Evil. Because everything about this is basically a ripoff. Um, if you like Resident Evil, you might like this game also. But to be honest, so far, there's nothing special about this game. Um, I, it was kind of okay. I was kind of getting far in the game. But then all of a sudden, the game froze on me. And I had to go back all the way to my first save file. Which sucks. Which is one of the reasons why I don't really like survival horrors like Resident Evil. I want to be able to save as much as possible. But I think that's the charm in um, uh, these horror survival games. Now this game, technically, I already own, but the copy I originally own is the greatest hits version that I grew up with. Well, I saw this was a black label one, so I went ahead and picked it up. Now, I am not replacing my greatest hits version, but I am adding this one to my collection, mostly because I prefer the black labels of the PlayStation ones, because it seems like every time you get the greatest hits versions, they're always like taking art away from the game disc. Like this one, for example, the greatest hits version has like a plain white disc, but this one actually has some art right there. See, you can actually see Squaw's face in there. Now, I would say Final Fantasy VIII is not my favorite Final Fantasy game, but it's one of those games I grew up playing. So it does have a special heart for me. Especially the opening cutscene. That, that I really do love enjoying watching, like every time I do pop this game in. So yeah, if you like, I guess, Final Fantasy VIII, go ahead and rebuy that game, I guess. Now, next game I'm going to show you guys is a GameCube game. Resident Evil Zero. Now, I have yet to play this game, um, but I believe this one's actually a prequel from the first game. I'm not 100% sure, but I can't wait to give this game a try. <laughs> now, this game, this game I've been looking for for quite a while. I could never find this, a copy of this game anywhere, no matter what flea market, um, conventions, or game stores I go to. It seems like they never have this game, and it looks like a pretty common game. But for some odd reason, I can never find it. And that is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2X. Now, yes, I do have Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 on PlayStation, but here is basically a remaster version with some extra levels, which is from the PS1 game. Nothing, that's about it, nothing too special about this game. If you like Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2, you're gonna like the Xbox version also. And here we go, here's another game. I've been not really looking for, but for some odd reason, I decided not to pick it up, even though I kind of want the game, and that is AMP. Now, I played EM2 a long time ago, and it's like the only game that literally gave me blisters on my thumbs. And it's mostly because of the freestyle trick that you can do in the game, which is like the only way you can score big points. Now what's good about this game, they don't have freestyle mode, which is great, because I don't have to worry about getting blisters on my thumbs. Now you're probably wondering, how did I get blisters on my thumbs? Well, to do tricks in these games, you have to use the two analog sticks to do spins and grabs. So yeah, that's how I pretty much got blisters on my thumbs, is because how the tricks um, stuff works. It's pretty, pretty good on storyboarding games, in my opinion. It's not too bad. All right, next stack of games. Again, from Game Exchange, um, I picked up a Ape Escape on the loose. Now, I have yet to play this game yet, um, but what it looks like, it doesn't look like from the first game that originally came out for the PS1. I still don't own that copy, but I have played the first game of the series, which is actually not too bad of a game. But um, what, what this looks like, it looks like it has a bunch of mini games, so I'm not 100% sure if it's any good. Now this one, this one is kind of strange. I did in fact play this for a little bit. And that is Revenge, Vengeance, Revenge is Sweet. 
they aren't. Now, with this game, they, it's pretty much a mix of everything. They treat it like an RPG. It's a 2D fighting game, and it's also a shoot 'em up game. All three combined in one. Now, it's not the best game. It does have its flaws. The 2D fighting, I don't think it's all that great. It feels like I'm playing Street Fighter 2 again, which in my opinion, it's not good because I was never really a fan of Street Fighter 2. I know a lot of people out there who are, but I'm more of a Mortal Kombat guy. So anything that, uh, any fighting game that plays like Street Fighter 2, it's kind of like a no-no in my book. But I do, I would give it credit for being more original, trying to mix RPG in the fighting, fighting genre. So here's another Sega CD game that I picked up, Star Wars Rebel Assault. Now I'm so glad when I first went to the store I saw this game, cause this is the game I remember seeing on the Game Chase, the very first episode when I first saw them, where Melvor and Billy were arguing over this game. Um, to be honest, in my humble opinion, this game is not great. It's one of those cheap full motion video games. I mean, it, it is a shooter, but I don't think it's all that great of a game, so... Yeah, I think it's one Star Wars games I think you, you guys might want to avoid. But if I had to pick the new Star Wars Battlefront 2 in this game, I would definitely go with this game, because this game will most likely make me save a lot more money. Because I only pay like, what, $17, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 is what, 60 now? Hmm. Fuck you, AEA. Fuck you, EA. So the next game I'm going to show you guys is a Sega Saturn game called Battle Arena Toshiden Remix. Now, I did not know there was a upgrade version from the PlayStation. Apparently the PlayStation did not get the remix version as far as I'm aware. But I am not that big of a fan of a Battle Arena because I think the game is too slow like Tekken. I don't like my 3D fighting games to be slow. I want them to be fast, like kind of like Mortal Kombat or the first two Bloody Roar games. Those games were fantastic. Oh, man, I, I wish they speed up these fighting games. I hate slow fighting games. They suck so bad. So I got three more games I'm going to show you guys that I picked up from Game Exchange. And this next game I'm going to show you guys, I've been looking for for quite a while. And that is Downhill Domination for the PlayStation 2. Now, I had such a hard time fighting this game, and I'm so glad that I finally own a copy. Because um, when this game first came out, I heard a lot of good things about it. But what sucks back then was that we did not have a PS2 when this game first came out. I didn't even own a PS2 until I started working at the age of 18. And um, actually, I was probably 19 when I picked up. I started working when I was 18. But when I was 19, I finally got myself a PlayStation 2, finally. And I don't regret it. There are so many great games for this system. And now I got another good one for it. Uh, I played a little bit of it. It's all right for now. I'm just having a really troubled time keeping my character on his bike. Um, you don't want to turn too much, because if you turn too much, you will fall off quite easily. So yeah, that's something I have to work on. I also got to work on learning some tricks, because unlike other extreme sports games like Tony Hawk Pro Skater, instead of being like squares, like flip or circle as grab, all your tricks is basically triangle and L1, R1, R2, and L2 buttons, which is going to take me a while for me to get used to. So yeah, so yeah, for right now I do recommend Downhill Domination. Oh. Now another game that I've been looking for for quite a while that I so happen from Game Exchange, man, I'm really loving Game Exchange because I'm finding games I've been looking for for like forever, and that is Mortal Kombat 3 on PlayStation. 
Um, uh, if you play the Sega Genesis version, why not? It's pretty much the same game. The only thing that's different that I saw so far is the fact is the main menu screens and how slightly better graphics are. But to me, it's like any other Mortal Kombat 3 game I play, like on Super Nintendo also. So, that said, um, yeah, you're not really missing much from this copy. Now this last game I'm gonna show you guys is something that my roommate wanted me to pick up while we're at Game Exchange, and that is Super Smash Brothers Brawl. Now I'm not too big on the Smash Brothers series, but it's one of those few games I am able to play with a bunch of my friends, cause this is literally like the only game they're willing to play together. Which I'm not too big fan of the game series again, but... Hell, if it gets us together and drink beers, why not? Now, this last item I'm going to show you guys is something I've been looking for for quite a while. It's basically been sold out everywhere since it's been released, and every time it's restocked, they'll buy it up instantly. And mostly, they're just buying them up so they can resell them. Which I am no way shape and form I'm going to pay more for something that can get it cheaper while it's in stock in stores. And luckily, at Best Buy, they had this item literally stacked on the table. I was actually quite surprised they had so many um, copies left because uh, I just got off from work around like 7 p.m. So I think I got really lucky. And what is this item I'm talking about? The Super Nintendo Classic Edition. Now, I will say this. No, I do not own a Nintendo Classic, and I have no interest in that one. Mostly because I basically have all the games that was on that Nintendo Classic. So to me, um, I didn't think it was worth my money to get one. But now this one, I do have most of the games on the Super Nintendo that's on here, but there is one game I'm never going to own an official physical copy from Nintendo, and that is Star Fox 2. Now, I'm not that big on the Star Fox series. I just really like the name Star Fox. I think that the name sounds a lot cooler than Star Trek and Star Wars. Uh, I guess that's probably because it's my inner furry that's telling me this. But, um, I'm really glad they finally released Star Fox 2, even though it is on a, basically, an emulator system. But, it's the most official thing that I'm probably ever going to get close to a physical copy of this game. And I did play it, and it's alright, it's not the greatest. Um, I kind of do wish they did made a physical copy of this game, like they should have done back in 96. But I believe the Nintendo 64 was out by the time this game got completed. And for why I understand, Nintendo didn't want to embarrass himself releasing a game for a system that's actually obsolete now. So, yeah, that was very stupid of you for Nintendo. I'm very disappointed of you. So, yeah, um, that's all I have to say about this. It's an okay um, game, Star Fox 2. So, that is my pickup video. Um, thank you, everyone, for stopping by. I'm probably going to be doing another one in the next two months. But, again, I am going to I am going to leave my convention pickup video separate from the every two month pickup video so yeah so that said thank you very much for stopping by this is the video game hunter and until next time goodbye